Hey, remember that team that I was going to run the Xfinity race at Michigan for? Uh, it changed. Uh, we're going to go for TriStar now. We're going to take over J.J. Yaley's ride. So, uh, well, we took one truck whacker out. Is that what we call drivers who run truck series in Xfinity? I'm going to call them truck whackers. Well, we're truck whacking in a truck whacker's car, and we are going to see what we can do at the Michigan International Speedway for the Irish Hills 250. Welcome to a track we've already been to in this career mode in the truck series, but this time we're going to be racing in the Xfinity series. And once again, that Smithfield car just lurking over my shoulder, just begging me, why did you turn off your game and not drive me? Well, well we're going to try to beat the Smithfield car again and take our fourth Xfinity win in a row. That would be an incredible feat. Let's see if we can do it. So here we come out of turn number four, pretty much flat out the whole way around, so we'll probably end up qualifying last, I would guess. Yep, last. Last place, how close were we? Oh, not, not very far off at all. We're right on the back of the field, so that's pretty good, I guess. Let's get racing here at Michigan. Okay, so coming down for the green flag here at Michigan, and we're racing here in the TriStar Motorsports number 14 which is interesting why it's numbered 14 now, I don't know if this is still true but TriStar Motorsports used to have an IRL team when I, the IRL just formed uh, their driver was for a while Stefan Gregoire and then I think a couple other guys like uh, Jarrett Schrader and uh, Tice Carlson and, you know a who's who of IndyCar racing but one of the co-owners and actually one of the guys who ended up driving for the team later on in the 1999 Indy 500 was a guy named Tony Stewart. Now I'm not sure if the 14 is a coincidence or Ode Smoke still has uh, some uh, skin in the game at TriStar Motorsports, but uh, it's fairly interesting that at least a team that Tony Stewart used to own, or partially own, uh, he's still, uh, they still use his number, or they are using his number. I think the other stars, I think when they called it TriStar Motorsports, I think it was because it was like formed by three kind of big names. I think one of them was a football player, obviously Tony Stewart was one of them, and then somebody else. I can't remember exactly how it went, but uh, yeah. And by the way, we are, we are flying through the field, even though in one of Tony Stewart's cars, we just wrecked a Tony Stewart car. So um, good job, coleslaw custard, and it is, this game is lagging for some reason really, really badly. Not really sure why. We are flying through the field because I uh, loosened up the car. I forgot to say that before qualifying. I loosened up the car before qualifying, so we're using the custom setup. And we're absolutely decimating the field by actually having a, a car that can actually take the corners decently. Which I suppose is a good thing. As we bump off of Bubba Wallace, try to bump him into a cup ride. Why not? Uh, f well, there's the 52 car, the one I was going to drive until they just decided, oh, no, you're not going to drive that anymore. We went four wide there for just a second, and somehow I was able to uh, make it through, no problemo. Good lord, we are just... Oh no! That was a weird glitch. Wow. Wow. What a crash that was. Well, I got a little too confident. The stage is over. I can't believe the stage was that short, but I guess it was. So we'll pit, we'll get repairs, and we'll get back out there, shall we? Even though the car is looking pretty worse for wear. I uh, can't wait. I wish I could see it on the front. Heck, it even looks like, if you look at the Ye the name Yaley, it looks like even the, uh, the back windshield got smashed in that crash. So that was quite a crash, that's for sure. But we're back to racing regardless. And I better listen to the spotter this time, because he's like, easy, easy. Maybe I should listen to him. Yeah, eight laps to a stage, so... I'm not really sure why the stage ended, unless we ran eight laps, and that was a very fast eight laps if that was eight laps. Or it was just that big of a crash that uh, we needed to end the stage right then and there. Anyway, we're back to racing. And we're gonna bump into one of the Flex Seal cars. There's three of those. I hadn't realized that. There's the 0, the 0, 1, and the 4. There's three flex, uh, flex shot cars, or flex seal car. They're red with a yellow number. It says flex on them. So we're going to drive around Coleslaw Custard, who's looking 
very bad. In fact, all these cars in this side. Oh, look at, look at uh, Brendan Poole up here. If we can get up to him, because his his hood is turned completely all the way up. Let's see if we can get up to him so you can see that. Look at that. Holy smokes! That does not look like that does not look very aerodynamic there. Uh, Brennan, how are you running 21st with that? Wow. All torn up. For over 200 miles an hour in a Xfinity car. Boy, howdy. That's how you do it right there, boys. 200 mile an hour. No problem. Now down the back straightaway. Catching a draft. Not to 200 down the back straightaway, which is interesting. Only at 197 there. We're starting to move up into the playoff point positions. As we get underneath uh, guidance counselor Brad there. Underneath him we go. Moving up. Oop, I was going to move up the track, but uh, uh, Ty Dillon was there. And he said, no, you're not going to move up the track. As we go underneath Brennan Gone. And now up behind Harrison Rhodes, the other flex, uh, flex tail. Okay, he's the flex tape car. So we got flex shot, flex seal, flex tape. Interesting. Now we're getting the focus on the Smithfield going around him. No problemo. And now we've got just a few cars to pass before we are up in the lead of this dang race. And we're just driving away. We're just driving, driving all the way up into him. Just with the greatest of ease. Even with a car that we absolutely kill on the wall. As we, you just heard the spotter said we post our best lap ever at Michigan. Trying to go around the outside of Jeremy Clements. We're going to go three wide. Jones, Clements, and me. All the black and white cars. Black, red, and white cars all together. All three wide. Now we've got three cars to pass. We've got William Byron, Justin Allgaier, Daniel Suarez. Let's see what we can do. Can we get around Suarez? Oh, he's going to move up the track and try to take me out. Or maybe not intentionally try to take me out. But he, he, was, he was moving on up there, wasn't he? We're going to get a little bit of a side draft there. we got 20 laps to go, but three in the stage. So we're going to try to get going around the outside here. Around the outside. Uh, it's just, nah, it's not quite sticking the way I'd like it to. At least we cleared Suarez. So let's see if we can get a stage win here. We got three laps to do it and two cars to pass. So you'd think, you'd think we'd be able to do it. I've been surprised before and I'll be surprised again. So let's get up behind William Byer and see if we can pull in and get him. Whoa, he's coming into the pits. Uh, okay. Why? Why did he do that? Why did he do that? Okay. Well, we will take the lead. Lead from Blake Cook, Harrison Rhodes, Brandon Jones, and Elliot Sadler. And we're just pulling away in the 14 Superior Essex Toyota, which has smashed all get out. As we run around the bottom, and we're about to get one lap to go in the stage presented by NASCAR Heat Evolution. As we cross the line, lap a bunch of guys, and lap, lap William Byron as well. So I don't know what exactly their strategy was. It's pretty terrible, whatever it was. And it may end up being that they got a penalty for doing that, because I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to. Because I, I must have made it to the line before a lot of those guys actually got into the pits. Before the end of the stage. Or before the... Pits are closed during the state. That's such a stupid rule, by the way. But anyway, uh, here we come off of four, uh, corner number four, bringing it down underneath the white line, and we're going to see uh, the green and white checkers here in the end of stage one, taking or stage two, taking position one. Harrison Rhodes second, Brandon Jones third, Blake Cook comes home sixth, and there you can see the running order uh, with Almarola fifth. In fact, the running order completely changed. So let's pit bring the car in, uh, we'll do all of that, even repairs, and we will come back out as the leader, Harrison Rhodes, along the outside, Brandon Jones in third, Sadler fourth, here we go, ready to go back to racing, and we are racing once again, 
and we've got, now got 14 laps to go in the race so here we go and there we go bye bye field I swear to god this is on 105% I'm, I'm not <laughs> I'm not playing this on easy folks I, I will we will check this I mean if I if I am if I'm playing this on a lower difficulty I will be sure to change that we're going to actually look at it because I don't believe how, how quickly we're pulling away from the rest of the field uh, when when I when we finish this race because we we've got 14 laps to go obviously it's a long way to go and in fact we are going to need to pit again so that could throw throw some uh, some monkey wrenches into things but you know we're leading our fourth Xfinity Xfinity race and theoretically we could win our fourth Xfinity race we could be completely undefeated in Xfinity competition completely 100% undefeated. That's a possibility that could happen right now. But again, we've got a long ways to go. Still 13 laps. And we will just wait and see as we're coming around. We've got the, uh, uh, well, Brandon Jones has gotten around Harrison Rhodes for second place, so good for Jones, I guess. He moves up into a second place. And it seems like everybody's kind of holding station right at the moment. As the field seems to be spreading out quite a bit as well. I wish I could look backwards. Unfortunately, all I've got is the mirror to tell you what's going on. So we'll take a look at the fuel, which is eight, uh, eight laps. And we've got tire wear, which is we're still burning up the right front. I don't know if there's any way to actually not burn up the right front. We've got 1.1 seconds on Brandon Jones. I don't know what kind of horsepower TriStar Motorsports brought to Michigan, but we are using all of it right now just to absolutely blitz the field. And off we go sailing into turn one. Pretty, I mean, pretty easily stuck on the bottom. I mean, no, no drama at all. This is such a change of pace from the gateway race I ran with the trucks, where it felt like the truck just wanted to go into the wall on every corner this car is just completely completely and totally balanced the whole way around I'm flat out no problem we're putting two seconds on here uh, Brandon Jones just as we cross the line there not quite to two seconds but we're getting there slowly but surely as we cross down close to the white line but not completely on it off the corner once again down the back straightaway and how many laps of fuel do we have we have six laps in the tank probably have to come in with about three or four laps to go as was predicted as was prophesized and I, I just like to point out that again like Texas the crowd for this race is completely unrealistic as we've got nine laps to go six laps in the field so three laps will be or three laps to go will be when we will have to make our stop and again, just completely gapping the cars. This is unbelievable. I should have left my TriStar history rant for later on in the video because now I have nothing to talk about for a good eight laps as we cross by MIS Camping for whatever reason is on the outside of the track. I'd love to get some lap traffic, but this is such a big track. And, you know, only 39 car, or yeah, 30... Well, 38 cars I'm chasing to actually race in this race, which sounds like a lot, but on a two-mile oval, you know, if they don't get spread out very well, it'll take a while to actually get up and lap them, especially when you're running pretty much flat out the whole way around, and everybody else is theoretically running flat out the whole way around. 3.5 seconds, for the love of God. Just Is there a mercy rule in Xfinity series? Surely Kyle Busch would have triggered it at some point, but if there was, but uh, it doesn't seem there is. Well, we wrecked the absolute crud out of the car, but it's looking like it's not going to matter right now. As we've got seven to go, four laps in the tank, so again, right on the uh, fuel estimate when we're going to have to come in. As we get a little bit of understeer mid-corner, car moving up the track just a little bit, but we evened it out. 4.2 ahead of Brandon Jones. 
and arc it off into turn three. 4.4. I can't, you know, this is, I, I don't know, again, it's like, how are the AI this, I mean, it, it's weird. I mean, it's like, okay, I know I'm going to sound like a hypocrite because I complained about the rubber banding. There's got to be a happy medium between forcibly slowing the players down to the point where the AI can speed up at will and pass you when you're in a predetermined position where you're not supposed to be. Or, you know, it's the AI can be completely terrible. And we've got a yellow, so that is going to throw the monkey wrench into this. We won't need to repair the car. We won't need to take on uh, two cans of fuel. I think one and a half will do it. Four tires, and we'll get back to racing here. And we've fallen in 19th. How on earth did that happen? Well, the game got mad at me because I was talking mad crap about it. So here we go. Now it's a challenge. And we are racing with three laps to go here at Michigan. Well, our perfect Xfinity record hangs in the balance. Looks like Ryan Reed is leading the race. I think. I don't know. Whoa, we almost crashed off the case of cane there. We don't want to do that. That is a that is a bad life choice. As we're trying to wreck all the Hendrick Motorsports cars here. And there goes Suarez down to the inside. We'll pull off the corner around guidance counselor Brad in behind the Smithfield car. Somehow the most aerodynamic car ever, the 48, is still able to hang on on the bottom. Now to the outside we go. Can we pull around that very aerodynamic number 48? No, we're not able to. Oh God, are we gonna lose? Are we gonna lose it this way? Boy, this this would be a bit depressing. Well, let's see. We got to get Elliot Sadler and Brandon Jones as we make it four wide around the outside. They're gonna make me work for it. I guess that's a good thing, right? Here we go. The game is punishing me for speaking ill of it. One to go. Presented by. Credit one bank as we dive it off into turn one. Absolutely stuck on the bottom here. We've got such a huge run on Elliot Sadler and Brandon Jones that I don't want to speak too soon. But I think the result may be inevitable. So we're going to dive it down into turn three here. Just kind of hang it on the outside of Brandon Jones. Oh, it may be close up. Oh, bounce off him a little bit. And take the lead in the final corner, the final lap. Oh, make a little bit of contact, but pull in front of him. Take our fourth Xfinity win in a row. And our four for four in Xfinity. Unreal. Just look at some of these jalopies racing. My car looks like an open wheel car. You got <laughs> Brennan Poole there with a, I mean, the, the most aerodynamic car I've ever seen in my life. I mean, literal jalopy racing is this. Look at this. Ridiculously hilarious. As we go down the back stretch there, uh, hopefully we'll get this shot of the two uh, broken cars side by side. Yeah, look at mine. Good God, it looks like a it looks like a junk demolition derby car. Well, anyway, we won the race. We won a stage. We won our fourth Xfinity race in a row. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, it looks like the finishing order is bugged because Blake Cook did definitely. Definitely did not finish second in the race, but uh, well, we'll just take the good with the bad there. And uh, up in the points, we're all the way up to 21st, four wins, 22 playoff points, 186 points total. Uh, we're in the chase, right? We're in the chase, right? We should be in the chase. Surely we're in the chase, right? Right? And here's the victory lane celebration. TriStar Motorsports goes to victory lane, and uh, wow, they've they beat all that. They it must have just been a scratch because they buffed it out real easily. And there I am in my superior Essex Toyota uniform. How cool is that? It's starting to get old though. We're winning too much. We're doing so much winning. So TriStar Motorsports is again like, oh okay, that's that's fine. Good job, dude. I guess you I guess you did okay. And what are we going on to next? Ah, oh, it's a Camping World Truck Series race. 
And it's in Iowa. I like Iowa. Let's go racing. Here we are back at Iowa Speedway, ready to go racing here in our truck for Shigi Akihitori. Let's see if we can take a win. I like Iowa. Oh, well, that was terrible. I thought I was on a pretty good qualifying run until I spun out. And last place we go. Uh, yeah, two seconds off, but, uh, you know, we spun out. Truex back on the pole, so good job, teammate. We've got, we've got the field sandwich. Hattori, Hattori Racing's got this covered. Let's get to the race. I swear to God, I think all these truck races are at night. I can't remember the last time we raced in the day, but we're back to racing here at Iowa. Or I guess we should I should say we are racing here at Iowa. As we get in behind Brian Duzat here, let's see what we can do around the outside, potentially with a nice loose race car. And now diving down to the inside, catching Ross Chastain, Spencer Boyd, three wide inside. And I got to stay off of that bottom. That's what caught me out during qualifying. I think we're way faster than what we were in qualifying, just based on how the truck is handling right now. We've got 13 laps to go in stage one, and we've wrecked Jennifer Joe. Well, uh, one of the drivers, one of the few drivers that didn't hate me will now probably hate me. Oh well, you, you live and you let live, but uh, I feel like uh, Jennifer Joe is gonna be very upset with me, very upset. Well, anyway, we'll continue on. In behind Clay Greenfield. We'll try to work around to the outside. No, we won't. We'll bounce off the wall. We'll try to dive it down underneath Clay Greenfield. Can we get there? I don't think we can. Well, maybe we can. The inside we go. Just to tap the brakes just a little bit. Again, Greenfield down to the inside. Trying to get there. Not quite. Side by side. 11 laps to go in stage number one. And bouncing off the wall. Have I damaged the truck? Yes, I have. What a shocker. And it's one of those things where it's like, come on, truck. I almost called it a car. That's probably why it's mad at me. It's probably why it doesn't want to go fast. So they keep calling it a car. Okay, here we go. In behind Myatt Snyder. And I guess the spotter liked that lap because he lagged the game just to tell me he liked it. And there goes Greenfield to the inside, and he couldn't quite get there. Now into turn three. Around the outside we go, diving it down in the draft of Snyder. Diving to the inside of Snyder. And he hasn't tried to wreck me yet. TJ Bell's another truck that hates me, and he's going to hate me even more because I just used him up going into the corner. Here comes Snyder down to the inside. Are you going to be mean to me? Let's see if we can aggravate Matt Snyder. Oh, maybe. Is that aggravated? Or is that just me running into him? It's possible it was just me running into him. I'm still waiting to see the AI really do something crazy when I get, get them mad at me. I have not seen... Oh, well, maybe a brake check. That seemed like a brake check. Was that a brake check? I don't know. Let's see. Is he going to swerve into me? Drive up behind Snyder, down the inside, and pull around Snyder. Nope, I guess not. It was all in my head. It was all in my head. Still seven laps to go on stage one. We got a long time. If I hadn't been screwing around there, we might have actually really been able to do something with that. And it looks like maybe we got a truck in trouble up there. It looked like Coughlin was really, really slow off of the corners. Possibly just got tight going off at turn two. I think that's what it may have ended up being because it looked like he was going to slow a whole group of trucks down and then it didn't happen. So as we run behind Regan Smith here. See what we can do getting to the outside. No, we can't because we locked the brakes up just a little bit going in. Diving down to the inside like once again. And we're just, we've only gained 11 positions. It feels like we've gained more than that, but... Uh, oh, Wendell Shavis just... Block the heck out of Regan Smith. I guess they hate each other for some reason. And I'm diving to the inside of Regan Smith. Oh, Wendell Shavis. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And he's going to hate me too. That's what we get for short track racing. We just get everybody mad at us. And here comes Regan Smith down to the inside. Couldn't quite get there. Uh-oh. Truck pushing up. There goes Smith back to the inside, and he's going to get back around. So we've got four laps to go on the stage. No stage strategy this time. 
we're just gonna stay out. <laughs> we're gonna stay out all the time. We got plenty of laps left in the. Well, yeah, we got plenty of laps left in the tank. If people pit, they pit. We're just gonna run the full distance and just stay out and see what happens this time. No strategy. Not gonna happen. Not today, sir. We got three laps to go on the stage, so that means we'll have five laps to go on our fuel. Well, unless the whole field pits, which is a certain possibility, I would say. Because we're up to 21st out of 32 trucks. Which isn't necessarily an amazing... Oh, dear. Not an amazing result, and we've just made it significantly worse as we get a lot more trucks passing us on the outside, including Myatt Snyder. But he's not going to get around. Oops. Well, we'll just do that to ourselves once again. And fall all the way back to 31st. How great was that run for David? It was amazing driving, David. Amazing driving. I don't think you've ever driven better in your whole life. One lap to go in stage number one. And we're not going to be anywhere close to P number one. So we got six laps left to fuel. I'm going to come around and take the checkered flag in this stage. And you know what? I'm going to stage, stage out. I'm going to stay out for some track position on this one. As you can see, nobody scored 150 points in the stage. Ben Rhodes took the victory, and it looks like everybody is pitting. Everybody. Well, we're going to take a gamble. We're going to stay out. We're going to stay out. This is a stupid idea. But we're gonna we're, we're gonna roll with it. Ready. Here we go. And so we've got five laps till we're gonna have to come in, which is essentially halfway through the stage. And generally the idea is you don't want to lose a lap. But we're gonna lose a lap for sure, possibly two. Now we're gonna get run into by Kraft in there, and that's gonna make things complicated. Because the idea was to be the leader. And apparently we're not going to be the leader. We're not going to be anywhere close to being the leader. Oh dear. I may have miscalculated a little bit. I'm going to go three wide with Briscoe and Gregson bouncing off of Gregson. Dive it off into turn three. There's two things I can do. I can do a splash, which will keep me from going too many more laps down. Or, I can just do a full service stop and then make a short stop near the end of the race. I'm leaning towards that instead. We're going to take our lumps now and then uh, try to play the long game since we kind of were stupid during this stage. For shizzle. As we've got two laps left of fuel. Let's see how long we can stretch it before the end of the stage. Getting the car nice and nice and planted through the corner now. And there's the low on fuel symbol. We got two laps to go on fuel, so we should be able to make it a little bit longer. Let's see when it crosses over to one lap. That'll give me a good indication of when I need to start thinking about it. I need to think about it. Yeah, we're, well, okay, so when we cross the line, we hit one. So that means David needs to come in this lap. As Todd Gilliland is going to sneak underneath me and say, I would like to go down there. And I'm going to say, I would also like to go down there, and I, I need to go down there more than you do. So we're going to try to get down into the pits without too much drama. I mean, we're already causing some drama just getting into the pits to begin with. And here we go. Right, so we've already lost one lap, as you can see the field going by. So four-tire stop will take 15 seconds. The laps around here are slightly more than that, I think. So... Please go fast. Please go fast, pit crew. We don't need to lose two laps. We can get back on the lead lap at the end of this stage if we just get going now. Come on, come on, come on. Back out of the pits. Oh, God, we got to stay ahead of Ben Rhodes. He's right there. He's closing in. Oh, we got a yellow. How lucky is that? Uh, okie dokie. Hey, guess what David's going to do? He's going to pit again. You know why he's going to pit again? Because I can repair the truck on this one. And we get the free pass. We go to 32nd. And we got even more fuel on board. So that, that worked out a little bit better than you would expect. 
I guess the game tried to save me on that one. It Wendell Shabist me. Oh, it's, we got a slow truck in the top lane, and it's Noah Gregson who's just decided not to go. So we gain a lot of positions, go all the way up to 22nd. Well, the game's giving me a lot of gifts. I appreciate that. I'm never going to turn down a gift, but, uh, you know. Come on. Here we go down to the inside of Peck, or try to. Peck is being a little bit more difficult than I would have originally anticipated to get around. Now to the outside of Spencer Boyd there. Well, we'll try. This will sneak down to the inside and at least get 21st before the stage ends. Well, possibly 20th. If we can get to the inside of Peck without spinning out. I was very close to the edge of the world there. And the 10th place guy is across the line. We'll finish 21st in that stage. That was eventful. Well, we didn't score any points, but we definitely came out of that a lot better than I thought we would. And nobody's pitting. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I guess nobody thinks they can make it to the end. We've got 16 laps left to fuel. Yee. You know what we're going to do? We're going to pit again. We're going to do so much bidding. So much bidding. Uh, at this point, it's all about just kind of keeping keeping on a different strategy than everybody else. Even though being 21st, that would have, you know, it would have been fine. I'm not confident in my uh, abilities. As we have a truck slow there, Jennifer Joe Cobb causing some issues as we get back to the green. We've got 18 laps to go and 18 laps in the tank. So, oh. Well, that was smart of me to pit. I don't know why nobody else pitted. Pretty stupid decision there, uh, Camping World Truck Series. Y'all, uh, y'all kind of screwed up there. Hate to break it to you. Well, we're going to go around the outside of Grand Infinger. Guy we dueled with at Dover, and we're going to run into here at Iowa. He's probably one of the few people who wasn't mad at me before now. Now he certainly is. So we get down the back straightaway. Lots and lots of trucks all together. We're just going to ride the wall a little bit. Why is there a truck in the middle of the track? Oh, my God. Oh, Jennifer Joe Cobb just decided to LePage everybody. What in, on earth was she thinking? Okie dokie. Everybody is pitting. David does not need to. Here we go. So that was lucky. I don't know how that happened. Or, well, I know how it happened. Jennifer Joe was slow. Why on earth she was sitting in the middle of the track? We're going to have to really investigate that one to figure out exactly how, how that all took place. But regardless, we'll continue on as the AI completely made Muppets out of themselves. But now we're racing for the win with Chase Briscoe. As we continue to trade paint and trade the lead, that's going to just allow Christopher Bell down to the inside. And it's going to be a four-truck race for the win as we've got uh, Ben Rhodes on the outside as well. He's going to break into first corner as Christopher Bell moves up in front of Chase Briscoe. Now we've got to chase these two down. What can we do about it? And not quite there. Here comes Ben Rhodes down to the inside. We're going to go two wide for second. Well, that's not what we need to do. 11 laps to go in the race. We bounce off of Ben Rhodes just a little bit. Try to get a better run, but Rhodes is going to continue down the back straightaway faster than we can go. So that's unfortunate. Well, here we go. Looks like Ben Rhodes is coming into the pits for a second there. Why on earth was he going so slow? I don't understand that. Maybe he was trying to come into the pits and I ran into him. Definitely seems to be going slower. What is going on with Ben Rhodes? He seems to break in every race we run with him. So let's see if he breaks this time. As Rhodes bounces off of us. And no, he's just slow. Why is he so slow? Very strange. Well, we'll go up to third place and now Try to start making a move for the lead here. Also, you guys should spam Oh No Jennifer Joe in the comments because of what just happened. I feel like, uh, I feel like that is, uh, definitely something that needs to happen as we get way too wide and now have Ben Rhodes all over the back of us. 
So Ben Rhodes is just completely bipolar on what he wants or does not want to do. As he's trying to get to the inside, I'm saying no, no, no. We dive it off into turn three. It looks like Chase Briscoe now very slow off of turn four. Not sure why. And here comes Ben Rhodes to the outside. He's looking, but he's not finding. There's Christopher Bell who's not dominating this race. And we can just hang in third. Don't know where Truex has ended up. It's possible he got screwed on one of the stages and one of the cautions and he pitted and nobody else did or something like that. Crafton runs fifth, even though he's out of this fight right now. Even though this isn't much of a fight as we got Bell leading by a country friggin' mile over myself and Briscoe. It's kind of single file, which is interesting. Single file racing. What a novel concept. As we get down right next to the inside where we can spin out very easily. Oh, and Ben Rhodes got a very bad exit off of turn four, and it's going to allow Matt Crafted through. We've got five laps remaining in the race, so if we've got anything, we need to show it now. Because otherwise, Matt Crafton is going to get us for the third position. And I was not very fast through one and two there. That's going to allow Crafton to maybe take a peek. Oh, here he comes. Oh no, here comes Matt Crafton, and he's going to take the third spot away from me with four laps to go. So we got to try to find a line that works for us a little bit better than what we were running. And Crafton is just pulling away. Man, he is just flat flying. Just flat flying. I'm going to try to pull around in the center lane. That ain't working either. The truck is just pushing so bad off the corner. And now we've got to hold off Ben Rhodes for fifth. And I don't know if we're going to be able to do that either. We run very low on the track. The roads fell back quite a ways, so okie dokie about that. And now we're starting to catch Crafton up. What the heck is going on? This is this is comers and goers on, on steroids right now. So we've got two laps to go. What can we do? What can we do? Chasing down Matt Crafton for third. That looks like it, as best as we're going to be able to do. Christopher Bell and, and Chase Briscoe are absolutely gone. Off into the sunset already. Oh, and Briscoe's actually closing in on Bell. It's actually going to be a battle between them for the lead and for the win with one lap remaining in the motor race. As we get down into one uh, corner, corner number one, I should say. Off of turn two, here comes Ben Rhodes, and it's going to be a battle between us for the fifth spot. And who has won the race? It's Christopher Bell over Chase Briscoe. Very close, though, for the win. We're going to cross the line in fourth, so not too bad. We're definitely having a lot harder time in the truck series than we are in the Xfinity series, as we beat our speed rating. That's pretty good. So, fourth place, a uh, respectable result. That uh, definitely played out very realistically where there was uh, a nice spread of the field. Everybody kind of spread out nicely. Uh, there was a LePage, a big one, uh, and Christopher Bell won. So, very cool. Uh, let's take a quick look at the moolah, moolah, moolah we took from this race. Have we crossed over into the 9,000 thresh or 900,000 threshold? I believe we absolutely will. David can't do math very well, I don't think. And uh, let's take a look at the points, and we remain in sixth position. Though the uh, win totals of everybody are starting to rack up. And in fact, Christopher Bell has overtaken us for the lead in the chase points. So let's head back to the garage, see if there's anything else pressing to take a look at. So we uh, achieved a few more sponsorship goals, or I guess team goals, and we will be doing double duty at Kentucky. So that's next to look forward to, a double duty race at Kentucky racing Camping World Trucks and Xfinity. Hope to see you there for the Buckle Up In Your Truck 250. And we'll see you in the next video.